We hate to be the bearer of bad news, but nothing lasts forever, including the primes of several NFL stars. For NFL fans, few things are as tough as watching one of your favorite players decline. They spend several years dominating the game week in and week out, but eventually, father time sets in and suddenly, they're no longer the game-changing force they once were. So today, we're gonna take a look at 10 notable NFL veterans who are no longer superstars. Number 10, David Johnson. Remember the days when Johnson was a must-have guy in in fantasy football leagues, Johnson showed flashes in his 2015 rookie season with 12 touchdowns, helping the Arizona Cardinals reach the NFC Championship game. In 2016, he won countless fantasy leagues after racking up 1,239 rushing yards, 16 rushing touchdowns, and 80 receptions for 879 yards and 4 touchdowns. Unfortunately, Johnson suffered a season-ending wrist injury in week 1 of the 2017 campaign, thus derailing his chances of building off a career year. Early in the 2018 season, Johnson received a three-year $39 million extension from the Cardinals. He bounced back with 940 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground to go along with 50 catches for 446 yards and three touchdowns through the air. But Johnson struggled mightily in 2019 and only saw 94 carries for 345 yards and two touchdowns. Rookie head coach Cliff Kingsbury was forced to hand the starting duties over to mid-season trade acquisition Kenyon Drake as a result. Somehow, Arizona traded DJ's seemingly untradeable contract to the Houston Texans as a part of the DeAndre Hopkins trade. And no, we don't know why the Texans made the trade. A superstar receiver for an overpaid past his prime running back? Maybe Johnson will perform well as a starting running back for Houston, but will he bounce back to be a top 10 running back again? Don't count on it. Number 9, Thomas Davis. Davis was quite the late bloomer, if you will. He entered the NFL in 2005, but the former Panther star didn't earn his first Pro Bowl selection until 2015. Then head coach Ron Rivera was able to maximize Davis' skill set, and he helped Carolina reach Super Bowl 50. Davis followed up his career 2015 year with Pro Bowl selections in 2016 and 2017, but age has taken its toll on Davis. And it's safe to say that his days as a game-changing force are long gone. Davis regressed noticeably with Carolina in 2018. He played for the Los Angeles Chargers in 2019, but was largely ineffective with one sack and no interceptions or forced fumbles. He received a low 61.7 grade from Pro Football Focus for the Season 2. Washington signed Davis in free agency, reuniting him with Riverboat Ron, but don't expect Rivera to turn Davis into a stud linebacker again. He's entering his age 37 season, which is very old for his position in today's NFL. Keep the expectations minimal. Davis hasn't been a game changer since 2017, and that won't change in 2020. Number 8. Greg Olson. There are only so many game-changing superstar tight ends in any given era. Greg Olson was one of them from 2012 to 2016. After four seasons with the Chicago Bears, Olson was traded to the Carolina Panthers in the 2011 offseason. He formed quite the duo with quarterback Cam Newton, and they both helped to turn that franchise around. Olson passed the 60-catch and 800-yard mark five years in a row from 2012 to 2016. He hit 1,000 yards in 2014, 2015, and 2016 too. A three time pro bowler, Olsen, like the aforementioned Thomas Davis, was also instrumental in helping Carolina reach Super Bowl 50, where they fell to the Denver Broncos. Unfortunately, injuries and age have quickly caught up to Olsen. He played in just 16 total games through the 2017 and 2018 seasons, and in 2019, he had just 52 receptions for 597 yards and two touchdowns. Olsen and the Panthers parted ways after nine seasons, and he signed a one-year deal with the Seattle Seahawks, who desperately needed help at tight end. Olsen might come up with a big play here and there, but his Pro Bowl 1,000 yard days are long, long gone. You have to be realistic here. He's not going to bounce back in his age 35 season. Truthfully, it wouldn't be a surprise if he retired after 2020. Number 7, Marquise Ponce. Ponce will go down as one of the greatest centers in NFL history, and he deserves a spot in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But if 2019 was an indication of anything, it's that Ponce is no longer in the class of elite offensive linemen. Yes, Ponce earned his 8th career Pro Bowl selection in 2019, but that was obviously based on his reputation rather than his actual play last season. 
Ponce had a very lackluster showing in 2019. PFF graded him at just 51.5 overall, and he was hit with four penalties. Also, just consider this graphic they posted late in the season. The Pittsburgh Steelers still boast one of the best offensive linemen in football, so it's easy to overlook Ponce's struggles. He was last named a first-team All-Pro in 2014, and since 2015, the only All-Pro honor he earned was a second-team selection in 2018. Don't be fooled by his career resume. Ponce is no longer the superstar star lineman that some still think he is. The Steelers better ponder a succession plan. Number 6, LaShawn McCoy. McCoy entered his worst season as a pro in 2019, but who cares? He finally captured that long-awaited Super Bowl championship ring with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, McCoy was a healthy scratch for the big game, but a ring is a ring. A six-time pro bowler and a six-time thousand-yard rusher, McCoy had just 514 rushing yards and three touchdowns for the Buffalo Bills in 2018. In his lone season with Kansas City, McCoy McCoy had just 465 yards and four touchdowns. At this point of his career, McCoy is best fit for Frank Gore-like rules as a veteran backup who could help mentor a younger backfield. You can make a case that McCoy belongs in the Hall of Fame. All those Pro Bowl nods and the 11,071 rushing yards speak for themselves. But running backs are rarely effective in the 30s these days, and McCoy isn't an exception. It's time to accept that the man isn't a superstar anymore. Number 5. Xavier Rhodes The Minnesota Vikings have consistently fielded one of the NFL's best defenses under head coach Mike Zimmer. Cornerback Xavier Rhodes was once a key reason for their success. The 25th overall pick from 2013, earned Pro Bowl selections in 2016 and 2017. He also received first team All-Pro honors in 2017 after leading Minnesota to the NFC Championship game. But Rhodes wasn't as dominant in 2018, and he experienced major regression in 2019. Yes, he received a third career Pro Bowl selection, but that was totally based on reputation. Rhodes was actually among the game's worst starting corners last season, believe it or not. Rhodes received a woeful 46.4 grade from Pro Football Focus for 2019. According to Pro Football Reference, he allowed 81.5 completion percentage when targeted, as well as four touchdowns. It was an easy call for the Vikings to release Rhodes after the 2019 season. The Indianapolis Colts took a chance and signed him to a one-year deal. He'll hopefully improve after after a woeful final season in many, but we can't possibly expect him to reach that all-pro form again. It is long gone. Number 4. Jimmy Graham there was once a time where fans debated if Graham was the best tight end in football. Yes, even better than Rob Gronkowski. Graham was one of the NFL's most prolific pass catchers from 2011 to 2014 with the New Orleans Saints. He recorded 85 plus receptions and over 800 receiving yards in each of those four years, including two 1,000 yard seasons. Graham also recorded a whopping 46 total touchdown receptions over those four years, helping the Saints reach the playoffs twice. He was an absolute game changer in in the ultimate one-on-one -on -one matchup nightmare. Graham didn't put up that type of production again after he was traded to the Seattle Seahawks in 2015, although he did earn Pro Bowl honors in 2016 and 2017. The Green Bay Packers signed Graham in 2018 free agency, but for whatever reason, he couldn't make it work with Rodgers. Graham had just 93 total receptions for 1,083 yards and five touchdowns during his two seasons with the Packers. The Chicago Bears curiously handed Graham a two-year deal worth $16 million in free agency. Why are you overpaying a guy who's been on the decline for the better part of the past five years, especially on a dude entering his age 34 season. And folks, Chicago has more than enough tight ends on their roster. Graham, like the aforementioned Olsen, can come up with a big catch every once in a while, but he hasn't been a true superstar since his final season with the Saints back in 2014. He was good, not great in Seattle, and he was a massive disappointment in Green Bay. So don't believe for a second that he'll turn it around with the Bears. Number three, AJ Green. For most of the 2010s decade, Green was among the game's most feared wide receivers. He was a seven-time Pro Bowler who hit 1,000 yards in six of his first seven NFL seasons. When healthy, Green was good for 70-plus catches and close to double-digit touchdowns a season. But a toe injury unfortunately limited Green to nine games in 2018, and he finished with 46 catches for 694 yards and six touchdowns. A nagging ankle injury also forced Green to miss the entire 2019 season as the Bengals slumped to the 
NFL's worst record. Most wide receivers experience a decline once they're on the wrong side of 30, and on top of that, Green now has to work himself back into the mix following toe and ankle injuries. It also doesn't help that he'll have to share targets with new number one receiver Tyler Boyd, plus Auden Tate and rookie T. Higgins. Add it all up, and it's safe to say that Green's days as a game-changing superstar are long gone. He might be a serviceable number two receiver, but this guy isn't that class of elite wideouts anymore. Number two, Larry Fitzgerald. Given his age and all that mileage on his body, it's simply remarkable that Fitzgerald is still playing in his late 30s, and that he can still put up solid numbers. But as legendary as Fitzgerald is, there is little denying that he's not a superstar anymore. 2019 marked his second straight season of missing the 100 catch and 1,000 yard marks. He had 75 receptions for 804 yards and 4 touchdowns. Now, those are great numbers for a 36 year old receiver, but certainly not that of a superstar. Those numbers you'd like from a number two or number three pass catcher on your team. And even though Fitzgerald hit 1,000 yards in 2015, 2016, and 2017, he still wasn't quite in that class of the elite wide receivers. Those days have been over for a while. His longevity and devotion to the game are truly admirable. But even Cardinals fans know that Fitzgerald isn't a true superstar receiver anymore. Number one, Tom Brady. At least one third of the NFL teams would love to have Tom Brady's 2018 and 2019 production. But this is Tom Brady we're talking about. Regardless of his age, fans and pundits naturally expect MVP-like play from him every single week. Thing is, folks, there's a reason Bill Belichick was happy to move on from the greatest player in franchise history after 20 seasons. Okay, is, is, do you feel like the talent you have here is good enough? We're getting ready for Cam Newtons. Even Belichick knew his star quarterback was on the decline. Brady's completion percentage and quarterback rating have both dropped in three straight years. He had a mere 88.0 QB rating in 2019, far below his career rating of 97.0. Brady averaged just 10.9 yards per completion in 2019, well below his career average of 11.7. You just have to look at the numbers. 2019 wasn't an off year, it was the continuation of the GOAT's decline. Now entering his age 43 season, Brady will try to turn back the clock with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, he has Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski, Cameron Brait, and OJ Howard, and that's a ridiculous set of weapons. But Brady relies more on these short and quick passes. That's not the best fit for Arians, who builds his offense around deep downfield throws. Brady, at 43, doesn't have the arm strength to make all those throws. It's foolish to think that Brady is going to throw for 5,000 yards and 35 plus touchdowns en route to a Super Bowl parade. Enjoy him, Tampa Bay, but please keep the expectations reasonable. This man is no longer the superstar quarterback we once knew him to be. But hey, which other NFL players are no longer superstars? Join us in that comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.